Hello, hi, and welcome or welcome back to the Strategic Magic Podcast. I'm your host, Blue, and I'm a business astrologer here to help you use astrology so that you can start, grow, and scale your online business. Today, I am back with another episode, and this episode marks the halfway point through 2024. Can you believe it? We are already six months in to this year with cancer season. So this episode is going to be about what the cancer archetype represents, what are the major transits of cancer season 2024, and most importantly, how you can use this energy to grow and scale your business. So let's get into it. This is a really special episode, y'all. This cancer season marks the fact that we are six months in to 2024. I am so proud of myself and all of the growth that I have done, all the work that I've put in thus far with my business, and I really hope that you are too. This is a really big deal. And I also really enjoy this time of year because it highlights a really special time within the astrological year. So cancer season and Leo season, which is coming up next, both mark the beginning of seasons that are ruled by signs that are ruled by luminaries. So what I mean by that, a little astro background, right? There are seven traditional planets, the sun through Saturn, that we consider within traditional astrology. Cancer and Leo are held in special regard because the planets that rule them give light to the rest of the solar system. Cancer, being ruled by the moon, is the sign that rules over nocturnal light, and then Leo, ruled by the sun, really highlights that daytime light. So there's two different ways that you can interpret that, but we're, of course, going to focus on cancer season since that's the focus of today's episode. So cancer as an archetype is so interesting. Cancer is a cardinal water sign, and it's so interesting because whenever we talk about cancer, I notice that folks zero in on the water element, but don't really give enough credit to the fact that cancer is a cardinal sign. Water, as we know, is super fluid, super flexible. It is adaptable and has varying levels of depth to it. And this is definitely an innate strength that folks with prominent cancer placements have, especially for those of you that have cancer midheavens. But the thing to consider as well is that Cancer is a cardinal sign. So within astrology, we look at modalities to really understand the temperament of the signs. And with there being three modalities that a sign could fall into, the cardinal modality really speaks to initiation, beginning, and having the ability to initiate change and to disrupt and to introduce a new way of being, existing, operating within a system. It is the introduction of something new and the disruption of something that needs to crumble away, something that needs to be removed. And so cancer as an archetype is so good at innately understanding this and being able to use the flexibility and the fluidity of the water element to begin that initiation process and to lead by creating that new path by forging ahead and by taking action before others have really understood the assignment and are completely committed to the process. So in that way, there's an innate confidence that all cardinal signs have, but especially cancer as well, which is interesting considering the fact that it is ruled by the moon. Again, the moon is giving light to the solar system, but the moon is much more comfortable at night than it is during the day. And it is also the fastest moving planet that we have from the seven traditional planets. It literally changes signs every two to three days. It's changing phases really fast. Like it takes 28 days to move through an entire lunar cycle, which when you think about it, the sun changes signs every 30 days, and then the other planets move even slower than that. So that constant change, right? It really lends to the moon's ability to embrace the fact that change is the only constant, that instead of rejecting it and trying to fight 
its very nature. Instead, it has learned to move with intuition and to really embrace the fact that this is my nature. This is how I'm designed. I'm not going to be anything else. And that is part of what makes the moon so powerful. Now, within astrology as well, the moon can also represent our innate interests. So I look to this as a guide for intuitive desires. While the sun can represent the desires that we have that we're very comfortable leading with in public, the moon can represent the desires that we have that we're more comfortable hiding away, keeping to ourselves, right? Maybe not sharing outward, but it's still a very big motivator in terms of what draws us in, what motivates us to keep going. So in that way, there's a lot of inspiration that you can take from both the moon, which rules cancer and the cancer archetype itself. So whether you have prominent cancer placements here, a cancer mid heaven, or, you know, you have an empty cancer house in your chart, that's okay. You still have access to this energy and you're still able to utilize it, especially during cancer season. Now that we understand cancer as a sign and as an archetype a little bit better, let's get into the major transits that are happening this cancer season. So cancer season in 2024 is going to start on June 20th and it will end on July 22nd. So starting at the beginning of the season, We have on June 20th, the sun will enter Cancer at 4.51 p.m., which is quite interesting. This is happening on the summer solstice here in the United States. So again, it's very potent. The solstice represents that halfway point through the season, right? It's the pinnacle of that, again, that daytime light. And with it being in the summer season for us here in the Northern Hemisphere, it really highlights this desire that a lot of us are falling into is just wanting to be outside, wanting to be in the sun to relax a little bit and to release that go, go hustle mentality that sometimes as business owners, we can fall very much into. That is the energy that we are beginning cancer season in. So again, it's taking a lot of those themes that cancer as the archetype represents, but it's amplifying this desire to where you are naturally drawn to perhaps having fun, relaxing a little bit, and letting go of these perceived personas or things that you feel like you need to have to be taken seriously, and where you can embrace the fact that you are enough, just how you instinctually are designed. That is the energy we are starting cancer season off with. Now, The very next day, June 21st, is a very interesting astrological date because this cancer season, we have two full moons that are happening in the same sign of Capricorn. The first full moon in Capricorn is happening on June 21st, and it'll go exact at 9.07 p.m. Eastern time. I would say that this entire cancer season is an important time for you to look at not just the cancer ruled house in your chart, but also the Capricorn ruled one as well, especially with the two full moons that are happening within cancer season. Really examining how Capricorn can support you in the journey of building and growing and scaling your business, but also how you can find that balance again between the desire to move forward to initiate, to build sustainability in using your business as that tool, but then also embracing that aspect of cancer where you can release the tension and you can let that instinct really come in, allow those hidden parts of yourself to also lead you towards what feels sustainable and in alignment for you. So it's all right if these themes don't come exactly during the full moon because you will have a chance to revisit them during the second full moon that's happening in July. Those are the two main astrological events to look out for in June. So moving on in July, we have on July 2nd, Mercury entering Leo. Mercury, as we know, is a quick moving planet. It enjoys and embraces moving forward and being able to share ideas, to share communication quite fast. However, when it's in Leo, I suspect that this will be a time where the ideas and communications that really interest the collective and perhaps even you, dear listener, 
it'll be around those Leo aspects, those Leo themes within your chart. So the space where you may want to get and gain more visibility around your ideas. You may want to be celebrated and really highlight your thought leadership. This will be really good energy to work with in terms of really supporting the evergreen assets that allow your business to function. So again, this is returning to those themes of cancer season, that desire to close a laptop and be outside, but to still find that balance so that your business can continue to function and run even when you're offline. And so in order to do that, you need to have the right systems in place, the right um, assets that are available to run for your clients, your community members, your ideal clients to tap into, right? on demand for them at a time that feels really good and best for them, not just when you're available online to manually do it. So Mercury and Leo can be really supportive energy around that. But I would also, you know, caution to not move 100% with just passion to create space to prioritize what needs to get done versus what just feels fun. This will be especially important beyond July 2nd because we do have the second Mercury retrograde of the year coming up and that will happen firmly in Leo season. So I'll talk a little bit more about that in the Leo season 2024 episode. But if you want to get a head start on preparing yourself and your business for Mercury retrograde, definitely check out my Mercury retrograde episode of the podcast after you finish listening to this. I have a lot of tips on how to navigate it and to make Mercury retrograde a little less painful than it can be for you. So again, Mercury entering Leo at 8.50 a.m. Eastern Standard Time doesn't have to be so scary. And there's definitely ways to incorporate it within your business building. Okay, so a few days later on July 5th, we have the new moon in Cancer that'll go direct at 6.57 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And again, Cancer is ruled by the moon. So this is quite comfortable for the moon to be in that sense of ease and a real highlight to the Cancer ruled area of your chart, a real spotlight here. It's a really good time to plant seeds of learning how to work with that slower softer, more intuitive aspect of your personality and your chart, and perhaps bring that out more forwardly into your business and your personal brand. If you want to know more specifics about how to work with the new and full moon energy, I do talk about this more specifically on my astrology for business email list. So definitely make sure that you head to the show notes of this episode and sign up for that because I'll dig even deeper on how specifically to work with the two full moons in Capricorn, as well as a new moon in Cancer for your business. So after that, we have... Venus entering Leo joining Mercury on July 11th, and this will happen at 1219 p.m. So Venus is a planet of attraction. As we know, it's a powerful planet to work with in terms of business astrology because this deals with the things we are attracted to and what we find attractive. This is a real highlight to being pull towards where your natural interests lie, what is attractive to you, and then again, really shining a spotlight on these aspects of your chart, where you can create space to be seen and recognized for them. This is good energy to work with in terms of building that thought leadership. Again, perhaps even collaborations, especially with that mercurial energy supporting it with Mercury and Leo as well. Then on July 20th, we have Mars entering Gemini, joining Jupiter, which is already here. So it's going to happen directly at 4.43 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Mars being the planet of drive, motivation, our desire to take action and to do something with the desires that have built up with the other planets. When it enters Gemini, this could create the potential for conflict around where we feel motivated to take action. A lot of these plans are entering signs where desire is more highlighted, the space to imagine, to think, to just be in the energy of possibility, whereas Mars prioritizes the action that is required to take those ideas and 
create tangibility around them, to make them something that you do something with. So having Mars enter Gemini, there could be supportive energy around that if you have this placement natally, because Gemini is also ruled by Mercury. There's also an emphasis here on taking quick action, on not letting your ideas sit too long. But then there's also the potential to be distracted as well. With Gemini being a mutable sign, it wants to dibble and dabble and have its hands in many different pots, which could lead to a lot of potential distractions, getting sidetracked, going on side quests that you don't necessarily need to go on. So it just could be something to consider, especially if this is making any interesting aspects for your placements and your chart. And then lastly, to wrap up cancer season, we do have the second and final full moon in Capricorn happening on July 21st. This will go exact at six. 16 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So this is another opportunity to revisit the themes and the questions that may have risen up for you during the first full moon in Capricorn on June 21st. And really considering, again, how the Cancer and Capricorn ruled areas of your chart could be really supportive for you in moving forward with your business. So those are the major transits to look out for and to prepare for during this cancer season. But even with understanding the upcoming transits, there could still be this question of how to use this energy specifically as a business owner. So let's talk about that, right? First and foremost, like taking note of where your general interests lie, right? Right now may not necessarily be the time for you to create a and launch a whole new project, especially with Mercury retrograde looming. I would suggest instead to hold off on initiating new ideas and instead taking that initiating cardinal energy and putting it towards revisiting, taking stock of the progress that you've made so far within your business. Again, we're halfway through 2024. There's a lot of work that still needs to be done, yes, but also a lot of work that you have done. So definitely create space to celebrate how far you've come from January, perhaps even revisiting any of the major transits that have hit you or even the major events and milestones that have happened for you in your life and in your business. But also suggest not fighting your natural inclinations this season. If you're here in the Northern Hemisphere and it's summer for you, having that desire to be outside, to close the laptop and be on Do Not Disturb. Instead of fighting that, it could be a really good time for you to consider what is a priority for you in your business. Coming back to perhaps the yearly goals that you made at the beginning of the year and considering what you can do in order to build up again those evergreen assets that can work for you behind the scenes that allow you to take time off and have the space away from being online while still having your business run in the background. This could look like really upping the ante in terms of collaborations, interviews, in creating space to build connections and really lean into those relationships that you've been cultivating with community members, but then also with past clients, with other industry leaders, where you can come together and create conversations that lead to different kinds of conversions beyond just sales. Another thing to note about sales, like there's always this myth around summer not being a good time to make sales in your business. And I definitely disagree. You can make sales at any time in your business. It really doesn't matter what is going on astrologically or even within the specific region that you're in in the world. So is there space for you to zero in perhaps on just focusing on your signature offer or even within that? If there's a way for you to introduce and bring your creativity around the way you market that core offer. Again, not really putting this energy towards starting anything new, especially with the astrological weather that is going on this cancer season, but instead really looking to how you can support your business and support the ideas and the things that are already working for you without necessarily starting from scratch. So in order to do this, definitely want to make sure that you consider what house does cancer rule in your chart? What planets do you have in cancer? And also where is the moon in your chart? I would even add to this as well, the 
house that Capricorn rules as well can help bring a lot of guidance and inspiration for you, especially with the two full moons that we are having this cancer season. And with that, my friend, that is how you're going to be able to make the most out of cancer season in 2024. Thank you so much for joining me in this episode. And everything that I mentioned will be listed out in the description show notes. So definitely head there and check that out. And with that, I'll see you in the next episode. Bye.